Hi guys, hope you're good. As you can see, I'm on holiday. If indeed he as always. I just thought I'd have some fun. Uh, basically, I haven't got round yet to building myself uh, a little portable speaker system, dock, whatever you want to call it. Um, and basically, I got this from a friend for free, which was broken. So this is the cheapest, most basic uh, speaker dock that you can buy from your typical department store, Walmart, or if you're in the UK, from Comet when it was available, Curry's, etc. Very cheap and nasty. Um, obviously, as you can see, I made a couple of very redneck alterations here. Um, so this basically came with two small speakers in there and uh, a kind of woofer driver on the back that was inside. Um, I ripped it apart, I fixed what was wrong with it. The changes which I've made to it, a bit redneck just for the holiday to improve my sound experience without spending any extra money. I had some old iPod uh, dock speakers laying around for an old iPod system. Uh, so I ripped those out. I basically cut some holes in the um, sides here and I've added those with a little bit of toilet roll um, for a little enclosure there with an with a infinite baffle back um, which actually works quite well as this that fires out the back and creates good mid-range actually bouncing off the wall in a corner if you have this in the corner. The subwoofer, I've rated the speaker. This was an, uh, a much better speaker from a Philips system. Um, it fitted nicely, uh, invert mounted, which obviously created more space inside the enclosure it's actually a little ported enclosure, if you can see that port there. Uh, tunes it to about 50 hertz currently. Um, and also what I've done is the original power adapter was 9 volts for this. Uh, and at the maximum volume it was distorting as if there wasn't enough power. Uh, so I'm using a Redneck, I'm using a 12 volt power supply. So I'm giving it more voltage than it's designed for. Uh, it seems to be working fine for now. And if it blows up in a few weeks time, I'm not too fast because it was completely free. And you know, it's not worth anything. So no problems there. I think that's about the only mods I've done to it. What I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to extend the port to get my lows there. Uh, it's tuned to, like I say, about 50 hertz. I just want to give it a bit more port length. The speaker on the back does move quite nicely, get some good excursion, get some good air coming out of the port there um, at maximum volume. So I'm going to take what supplies I've got here. Obviously, I'm on holiday. I haven't brought anything with me, you know. So I've just had a little fish around, see what I can find. Um, and this is some inner lining from a biscuit packet. So it's kind of plasticky and it rolls up into a tube nicely. You've got some nail glue here for your nails. So there's a bit of super glue, some scissors, and I've got some plasters here to use a like tape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this about, roll it up, extend the port, and I'm going to see what fun I can have with the acoustics in this room. As you can see, this is a completely tiled room. Um, I'm going to see what, this is just like some additional room on the villa. See what fun I can have in this room with the acoustics, find the resonant frequency uh, and see what kind of sounds we can make. Right, so it turns out the nail glue is only good for sticking things to yourself. Nails, hands, fingers, doesn't stick this plasticky kind of stuff together. So I'm going to have to go solo with the plasters here and um, see if I can make it airtight, see it all the way along here with the plasters, cut them up into small shapes. Uh, I might need to get some more than that uh, and do that, do it that way. Okay, so here's the port for now at least. It's not airtight, it's probably the leakiest port you've ever seen in your life. But with this low power, um, I just want to see what difference it makes to the tuning of the port, so you can get some more lows out of it. Uh, I'll try and find some sellotape, might try and buy some, just so I can get uh, airtight all the way along there, just to make it perfect. But nah, this will do for now, just to see what we can do. So, I'm first of all going to try it out without my new made port. Uh, I'm going to see what room, uh, frequency this room resonates at. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stick this in the washing machine and uh, use this a bit like a resonance chamber. And I played with this earlier. The door, if you bring it just a little bit open, uh, it actually kind of acts like a resonance chamber with a second exit, a bit like a bandpass box if you like. Uh, and it actually improves the bass considerably at certain frequencies. So. Let's uh, plug this in, whack this in the machine, and I'm going to put the camera over this side of the room. Uh, obviously, the wave is biggest there, I'm there on opposite sides of the room, where you've got two nodes. Um, and we shall see what it sounds like. Okay, so the docking station is all in the, in the microwave now. Got the door closed. The door's got uh, grills on it. It'd be better if it was completely sealed off, but I've got to make the best of what I can. Um, now, this, obviously, second resident chamber, let's start it off at, like, I don't know, 100-something hertz. Quite accurate, so 101 hertz. 
Uh, start the frequency, turn this on. Got some clipping there, let's turn the input gain down. Okay, that's about as loud as we're going to go. Now let's close this a little bit. See how it makes such a difference? I'm going to leave it about there. And let's go down the frequencies and see where we've got resonance in the room. 94 hertz is good. So we can get some nice bass from this shitty little Apple speaker. Uh, let's hit play. It's quite loud. Oh, sounds a bit silly. Let's try my handmade port, stick that in there and see if we can lower that resonant frequency down a bit and make some nice tones in here on some lower music. Let's see if it does make any difference whatsoever to the tuning frequency uh, in here. So let's play. So that's uh, 24 hertz. Gonna go up this time. 30 hertz. 35, 40, nah, it's not really doing anything, is it, down there? of six inch home cinema system subwoofers you get um, at that one frequency this is a burp situation yeah so at every other frequency it sounds pretty shit in here I'm not gonna lie but at 47 Hertz with this environment in this room that sounds really bassy you know it makes my ears feel weird you know that, that kind of bass you can tell is there that's quite impressive let's see what it does on the rest of the scale on a higher bass Not much on the higher 
range, I think, because I extended the port. That port actually probably tunes it. It's quite long. Look, if I take this out, I can show you the actual port size. It's quite big. It's probably too long, really. It probably, it probably tunes it more around the 20 hertz range, um, which is probably not ideal for a little three inch. So obviously you can see there, the original port goes to about here and there. Uh, obviously with the additional port, it does make it quite long. It sits in there nicely because of the flare, and it does make it quite long. 